This video is one of a series of how-to videos that we at LISAGA have put together to assist you in the field. To find other videos, just do a YouTube search using LISAGA as your keyword, and you'll find we have posted videos on some common procedures that you perform in the field, such as how to safely remove the travel blocks on our constant supports or our variable springs. We have videos on how to field adjust the load that a constant or a variable spring is exerting on the piping system. If the video you'd like to see is not there, just let your leasing a contact know and we'll try to make it soon. Thanks for your interest. In this video, we will show you how to adjust the load on a Lisiga variable spring. As you know, variable springs are designed to work within a range of pipe loads and pipe movements that are calculated for each support point. As the pipe moves up or down due to thermal movement, the spring coil will relax or compress accordingly, and the support will apply more or less load to the piping system as it travels through its range of movement. Under normal circumstances, the spring has been calibrated here at our facility to the preset load. The preset load is the cold load plus the weight of any hanger components between the spring and the pipe. However, if the line conditions have changed, for example, you have added or removed a pump or a valve, then it may be necessary to adjust the spring load to match the new conditions. Be sure that you make these adjustments with the approval and supervision of your responsible engineer on site. The first thing you will notice is that there is no load scale on the Lissiga variable spring. We purposely do not put the load scale on the spring can because the load changes can be calculated much more accurately using the travel scale that we put on the can here. Here I have set up a Type 21 D329 spring hanger that has its current load set to 50 pounds. Let's say that the line conditions have changed and the site engineer wants me to set the new load to 56 pounds. That's a six pound increase. So at this point in time, we know the current load and we know the new load. Those are two of the three pieces of information we need. The third piece of information we need is the spring rate. The spring rate for each spring is located here on the nameplate. And in this case, the spring rate is 12 pounds per inch. This means if the spring gets compressed one inch, then this hanger assembly will pull on the piping system with 12 additional pounds of force. If it gets compressed yet another inch, then it will be applying 12 more pounds to the system. In our example, we want to adjust the spring from 50 to 56 pounds. To find out how many inches we need to compress the spring, we use the simple formula that you see on the screen right now. Inches equals the calibrated load minus the new load divided by the spring rate. Plugging in our example numbers, inches equals 50 pounds minus 56 pounds divided by 12 pounds per inch. So, 6 pounds divided by 12 pounds per inch equals a half inch. Again, we know that we want the spring to apply more force to the pipe after the load change, and we do that by compressing the spring coil. This turnbuckle here is where we will make the adjustment. Turning it clockwise when looking at it from above will pull the rod up into the spring can. The turnbuckle is connected to the plate inside the can that rests on top of the spring coil. And therefore, this will cause the coil to compress as the rod goes up. So, we will need to record the information that the load plate is at the three inch mark according to the travel scale. And we're gonna add an additional half inch to that. So when we stop, we will know we need to stop at the three and a half inch mark. Load changes always need to be done with the spring can carrying the load and with the blocking removed. To start the adjustment, we use the appropriate wrench for the new turnbuckle and twist it until the load plate has moved to its new position.
And now our load plate rests at the three and a half inch mark. The next step we will want to do is to remove our hot marker and we will now replace it at its new position.